Hi everyone, Jeremy here from VT Studio and today I'll show you how to recreate this asset from our history pack. I'll teach you the techniques behind it and how you can do it yourself in Fusion. But if that's too complicated for you, you can just download that template for free with the link in the description below and use it directly in the edit page. This is a free sample from our history pack. So if you like those kind of assets, check out the full pack on our website that contains over a hundred cohesive assets to help you edit better video faster. With that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, so once in DaVinci Resolve, start by bringing a new Fusion composition to your timeline, and then you can move over to Fusion. Then here, we're gonna start by bringing a new background and link that background to all media out. Then gonna reduce alpha channel down to zero. This is basically gonna set all frames. So right now, that's just setting a frame that get the same resolution as the timeline automatically. Now, to create our effect, we're going to need a couple of things. The first one is going to be some texture. So we're going to need to have some old paper to use as our base. For that, we're going to go over to Texture Labs. They have a bunch of different texture that you can use for free. So here, I've just searched for old paper. And once I have find the right one for me, I'm just going to download it right here. I'm going to download it as a large. That's going to be enough in terms of size. Then I'm going to just bring it right here in my working area. And I'm going to link it here to my background one. And that's going to be the base of all frame. Then we're going to need a screenshot of a text. Right now, I've just searched for a PDF book of the letter from uh, Seneca, but it could be a Wikipedia page. It could be uh, anything, honestly, as long as it got a unify either white or black background. Right now, I'm just going to take a screenshot of this page and that's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to bring that page in our working area as well. And I'm going to then link the output to the merge. Now, as you can see, it is fairly small, so we're going to size it up. I could use a transform, but I'm going to do it directly from the merge in this case. So here I'm just going to increase it. So it's filling up pretty much the entire page. Now, as you can see, we are hiding our background. So what we want to do now is changing the apply mode from normal to multiply. It's going to remove the white and instead uh, we're going to see the background here behind. I'm going to then adjust the position. So here we go like that i like it now it looks great already and that's an awesome starting point the issue is that we don't see that much texture if we zoom in so here if i zoom in into the letter as you can see it's just been applied above the paper but i would like it to take the texture of the paper as well. So we're gonna do that by using a displacement node. So I'm gonna select my second media in, I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm gonna search for a displacement node. And then I'm gonna put the displace here in between my media in one one and my merge. Now we can't see anything happening yet. I'm gonna switch here to the X and Y and then I'm gonna bring the X offset to minus uh, 0.5 and send for the Y offset. Now, in order to displace that text that I've been fed here by the yellow arrow, I need to displace it using the texture for paper. So I'm gonna take the output of our paper and I'm gonna place it here on the green arrow to just feed that texture here to the displacement. Still nothing is happening for now, but if we go over to X or Y refraction, as you can see now, as we are adjusting this, um, we are deforming the text to take the shape of the paper. What I like to do generally to keep things fairly even is right clicking on the X refraction, selecting expression, and then I'm gonna link with an expression the X refraction to the Y refraction. And now they're gonna basically share the same value as I'm modifying it. Now we're going to zoom out because uh, as much as it is nice to see uh, the text affected like this, it's easier to realize how much deformation we need to apply when we see the text from afar. So now you can just adjust it to make the effect feel less or more pronounced. The effect of the displacement is going to be affected greatly by the texture that you're feeding into the text. So you might need more or less refraction. In my case, 0.008 seems to be pretty good. It's still fairly subtle. Um, and I like the look of it right now, both when I zoom in and when I zoom out. Now I'm going to create a frame all around my text. To do that, I'm going to bring a new background node and I'm going to link that background here to the merge too. As you can see, it's obstructing right now the entire frame. So I'm gonna take a rectangular mask and I'm gonna link that to the background. And now it's masking 
here a rectangle, but we want to invert that. So here I'm going to select invert and that's creating some sort of a vignette. So we can adjust now the width, the height to just cover up whatever we want here on the frame. In all case, we're just going to go quite all the way up to just really have only uh, a slight edge. So I'm going to do that the same here for the height. And now uh, I'm going to adjust the corner radius to have it being slightly rounded. It's already good like this, but I want to give uh, a sense of depth and uh, make it look a bit more interesting. So we're going to increase slightly the soft edge. That way that's just uh, going to give that edge a slight blur and that's going to make it look slightly more pleasing in my opinion. Now for the last touch of the composition, we could add some uh, film dust or film scratches. So if you have the page version of DaVinci Resolve, it's very easy. You can here select your merge three, it shifts space on your keyboard and bring the film damage. And you have pretty much a pre-built-in effect that allow you to make it even more vintage uh, with different color temperature, with different blur. There is really a lot you can do here. I tend to deactivate that scratch because I think it's a bit too much. But generally, already right now, you have something that looks really good with some dust uh, being animated over uh, the composition. And I think the general temperature shift really helped to tie everything together, uh, to tie the old paper and the black. The black are a bit more yellow and I think uh, that really helps. Now, if you don't have the studio version, let me share with you a technique on how you can create that yourself from scratch. Obviously, it's not going to be as convenient, but at least you can do it. So let me show you. For that, we're going to need to source some thin dust overlay. You can just source that anywhere online. Um, any static uh, one that you find is good enough. Right now, for simplicity, I'm simply going to go back to Texture Lab. So I'm going to go to Texture Lab and I'm going to search for film dust. Those are not necessarily going to be the best because they are not really uh, made for that. It's mostly just texture stuff. But for example, this one I think is good enough. So I'm going to just download it. I'm going to then bring it here in my working area and we can then just attach that to our merge three. Now, generally, when you have a dominance of black background and then a small element in white, you would like to just apply it with screen. But in all case, it doesn't really work because then the speck of dust are being white. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to invert the color and use multiply. So here, I'm just going to revert back to normal. And then here, select my media. It shifts space on my keyboard and I'm going to search for invert and we're going to bring that invert color. Now, as you can see, it has basically inverted uh, the black and the white in our image. So now when I go to do a merge and I'm changing the apply mode from normal to multiply, now we see the speck of dust being black. So that's good. We now have the dust overlay, but as you can see, it's not animated like it was uh, with the film damage. To do that, we're going to need to use a technique uh, that might seem complicated, but is actually pretty straightforward. So here I'm just going to make a bit more space. And what we're going to do is detach for now the media and we're going to bring full transform in our working area. So I'm going to search for a transform node and bring it in. And then we're just going to copy and paste it three times. Now I'm going to link the output of that texture to each of the transform. What those transform going to allow us to do is basically displace that overlay to make it feel like it's animated. To do that, we're going to use a switch node. So here I'm going to do shift space again, and I'm going to search for the switch node and bring that in. For the switch node, since we have four transform, we're going to need four input. So here I'm going to change that to four and then we're going to link basically each of those transform to the switch node. Now that everything is connected, I'm going to create some displacement on each of the transform. So the first transform going to remain as it is. Then the second transform, I'm going to flip it horizontally. The third transform horizontally and vertically. And lastly, I'm going to do only horizontally. That way we basically have a different position for each of those transform. So now if I go back to the switch and then here I bring it uh, to the view, as you can see, when I'm switching the input, we're basically getting a different position. And if we do that very fast, we basically have our animation. So we're not going to do that manually because <laughs> that's not going to work. We could keyframe it and loop it, for example. But uh, for something like this, I think it's better to use an expression and it's a lot easier. 
No worries if you've never used expression before. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You can just copy and paste the one that I've placed in the description below or just uh, rewrite exactly what I'm going to paste right now. So here I'm going to select source and I'm going to select expression. And then here I'm going to paste my expression. It's a simple math flow uh, time slash divided by the number of frame type of expression. Uh, it's not that complicated. It seems intimidating, but it's fairly simple. Uh, the only thing that you need to know is basically here with that number, you control the speed of that animation. So here that means that every three frame is going to switch the button, therefore the texture. So if you want it to be faster or slower, you can just change that. So here, for example, if I select two, that means that it's going to change every two frame. And if I'm selecting 10, that means that it's going to change every 10 frame. So right now, I think something that could be a good starting point would be three because we want that type of stuff to be um, animated fairly fast. Now, as you can see, as I'm playing it, we have our animation happening. Now, if you feel like sometimes some pattern are, you know, getting a bit repetitive by just having the horizontal flip, well, you can go a bit more granularly uh, by adjusting here the actual size, the position to just place it uh, wherever you want and have something that match uh, a bit more your desired uh, outcome. So here, for example, I could just adjust the angle and then increase the size. And you basically can just do that for each of the transform. And now when you're playing it, they will have even more uh, random positioning, for example. Now that we've created our dust overlay, which basically uh, took half of uh, the time of this tutorial, you can just connect it to the invert color. Uh, and now you will have uh, basically your overlay being animated. So using fill damage is definitely a lot easier if you have the paid version. The cool thing with this is that you can really feed any texture you want and you can give it really the look that you want. So uh, for example, on the text overlay, there was not like those uh, print right here, those fingerprints. Um, and that can be, for example, something that make the whole thing feel a bit more authentic and a bit more interesting. So this technique is really valuable for those kind of cases. Because now, as you can see, when we're zooming in, it looks very realistic and very interesting with that fingerprint uh, with like kind of ink and then the displacement of the letter and the texture of the paper. It makes the whole composition feel natural and uh, coming to life. So now we've pretty much created our entire composition. Now we're just going to do a simple animation to bring that text in. So we're going to do a simple blur and positioning animation. To do that, I'm going to go over to the text media. And then here we're going to bring a transform and a blur node. So I'm going to hit shift space again, and I'm going to search for a transform node and bring that in and then hit shift space and search for a blur node. Now let's start with the positioning. I'm going to animate it over, uh, let's say a second on the 25 FPS timeline. So I'm going to just here put a keyframe on the position at the final position I want it to be. And then I'm just going to go to frame zero and we're going to bring it where we want the positioning to be. I don't want it to be fully out of screen because that's too much movement in my opinion. Just want it to be uh, slightly lower, something like that. I think it's fine. Now we're going to make an animation with the blur. So we're going to go to frame 25 again. We're going to select the blur. We're going to bring the blur size down to zero, put a keyframe here, and then we're going to go at frame zero and we're going to increase the blur until the text is disappearing. So now we have our overall animation, but as you can see, it doesn't look very smooth. So we're going to smooth that out in the spline editor. So I'm going to go here and click on spline. Then here I'm going to select my transform and I'm going to select my blur. Then I'm going to click zoom to fit so I can see my points. And I'm going to select all those points. Hit S on my keyboard to smooth out the curve. Then hit to bring the easy in and ease out and I'm going to bring the easy in to about 85. That's a sweet spot that I tend to like. And now if we play it, as you can see, it's a lot smoother. Now you could add some additional animation here on the frame, etc. But um, I'm going to stop here because this video is going to become too long. One last quick tip is, for example, here after uh, this animation, if you want the text to start scrolling, well, I would highly recommend to create another transform just so to not mess up the timing of the other one and that you have a clear other line to play around with uh, so you can adjust the timing properly. So here I'm going to select uh, the transform, hit shift space, search for a transform, bring that in. 
decide on where you want the scrolling to start happening. For example, you might want to have it happen uh, directly uh, as the text is showing up, or you may want to just say a few things before and then having it starting at like from 80, for example. So then all you got to do is putting a keyframe here on the current position and then go uh, forward until you want the animation to end. And then you can just adjust the position to whatever length you need it to scroll. Now it's going to be fairly linear. So what I tend to like is here clicking zoom to fit. I'm going to undergo my transform two and my blur to just keep uh, the transform three. And that's why I prefer to do it on separated node. Um, it's just easier to you know, visualize thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing here and select only one point this time. And I'm going to hit S to just smooth out and rump up the beginning of the animation. So it doesn't feel as harsh when it starts moving. So as you see right now, it's a bit more smooth and you can then adjust that smoothness however you want with the handle or with the easing. So here, for example, if you wanted to rump up could do that um, and you can adjust the timing to go to a specific place but that's a tutorial for another day thank you very much for watching i hope this video was helpful again if all that seems very much complicated for you you can just download the preset uh, i'll put the link in the description below that you can then uh, use directly in the edit page without having to do any of that inside of fusion also, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, this is a free sample from our history pack. So if you like those kind of assets, we've created a huge library of over 100 assets that are all uh, cohesive and easy to tie together to create a very stylized video uh, a lot faster and uh, to make the experience a lot more enjoyable. So if you're into that kind of look, please go over to Vita Studio and check out the history pack. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transitions, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.